For nearly a half century after its founding, Major League Baseball was a white man's game. While not an official league policy, the exclusion of black and racialized players at the game's highest level was a universally honored gentleman's agreement among MLB's owners, and as much a part of the fabric of the game as the pitcher's mound being 60 feet, six inches away from home plate. Babe Ruth never stared down a black pitcher. Walter Johnson never snuck his fastball past a black hitter. That's just how it was. Segregation was the norm in America, and baseball was America. And then, shortly after World War II, thanks to the irreverence of one executive and the fearlessness of one gifted infielder, everything changed in baseball and in America. When Brooklyn Dodgers general manager Branch Rickey approached Jackie Robinson, a promising Negro League talent in 1945 about playing in the big leagues, he did so knowing that Robinson's eventual MLB debut would be greeted with hostility, rancor, and potentially even violence. Even though the United States had just fought and won a war ostensibly in the name of freedom and democracy, America remained a deeply racist and segregated country in the wake of World War II and white baseball fans weren't going to abide a black man in their game. It was precisely for that reason that Ricky chose Robinson, who wasn't the most talented player in the Negro Leagues, nor its most recognizable. But Robinson had, to borrow Ricky's words, guts enough not to fight back when provoked by bigots. And the bigots came out immediately, and in full force. Robinson's first spring training with the Dodgers in 1946 was an eye-opening experience for the California native, whose first foray into the Deep South provided a terrifying glimpse into the reception that awaited him when he made his Major League debut in earnest. As Robinson's wife Rachel put it, the treatment we received there was horrendous, while characterizing that first spring training in Florida as a nightmare. And just over a year later, after an auspicious season with the Montreal Royals, the Dodgers AAA affiliate, Robinson's medal was put to the test like never before. On April 15, 1947, in front of an official crowd of 26,623 at Ebbets Field, Robinson became the first black man to play big league baseball in the modern era, going 0 for 3 while reaching on an error in a 5-3 win over the Boston Braves. And so began the most important and consequential rookie season in baseball history. For Robinson, however, that hitless performance on opening day was but the first official chapter of what would be a uniquely punishing season. He was unwelcome in his own clubhouse, as several of the players he took the field with that April afternoon had previously signed a petition imploring the Dodgers to get rid of him. He was mistreated by opposing teams, who routinely threw at him and subjected him to racist taunts. Infamously, the St. Louis Cardinals had even planned to boycott their games against the Dodgers in protest, until National League President Ford Frick stepped in and threatened any would-be strikers with lifetime bans. And, of course, Robinson was subjected to horrific verbal abuse from opposing fans, including regular death threats. Never once, though, did Robinson lose his cool. He just played. Well, actually, he dominated. In his first season with the Dodgers, amid an unrelenting torrent of hostility from within and without, Robinson distinguished himself as one of the National League's best players, hitting 297 with an 810 OPS while leading his league with 29 stolen bases. He also helped the Dodgers to their first pennant in a half decade and brought them within one win of a World Series title. For his efforts, Robinson received the inaugural Rookie of the Year award, which would later bear his name, and finished fifth in National League MVP voting. And he only got better from there. Over the next seven seasons, only one player, Hall of Famer Stan Musial, racked up more wins above replacement than Robinson, a remarkably complete player who took home the NL MVP award in 1949 and led the majors in on-base percentage in 1952. And thanks to his immediate success, Robinson's impact within the game was as swift as it was profound. Not three months after Robinson's debut, Larry Doby, who had spent the spring raking for the Negro League's Newark Eagles, broke the color barrier in the American League when he debuted with Cleveland. Within the following two weeks, a pair of black players, Hank Thompson and Willard Brown, took the field for the St. Louis Browns. Despite deplorable holdouts from teams like the Detroit Tigers and Boston Red Sox, segregation of baseball was over. The 1950s were dominated by black superstars like Willie Mays, Roy Campanella, Don Newcomb, and Ernie Banks. And by the early 1960s, not even a decade and a half after Robinson broke in, black players were overrepresented in the big leagues relative to their percentage of the American population. And Robinson's impact ramified outside the ballpark too. 
His debut was, in a sense, a catalyst for broader desegregation throughout the United States. One year after Robinson took the field for the Dodgers, U.S. President Harry Truman desegregated the military, abolishing by executive order discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, or national origin. And six years after Robinson's sensational rookie season, the Supreme Court deemed segregation in schools to be unconstitutional as well. Ultimately, Robinson was a bona fide civil rights icon, both as a symbol and as an activist. And it's thanks to his remarkable talent and even more remarkable courage, incidentally, that Major League Baseball's rosters are as racially diverse as they are today. In 2021, almost 38% of big leaguers were players of color, earning the league an A-plus grade from the Institute of Diversity and Ethics in Sports. Having said that, diversity problems still exist within the sport, particularly at the management and executive levels, and it's worth pointing out that the proportion of black big leaguers has dropped off considerably since its peak in the mid-70s to mid-80s. Still, while there remains work to be done in terms of championing diversity in baseball and America, there's no question that both institutions were profoundly changed by and are forever indebted to that fearless man with the sweet swing, the slick glove, and guts enough not to fight back. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.